Man, nothing gets clicks better than impending doom, am I right? Tabloid journalism used to be easy to spot, but it's very easy to stumble upon news outlets detailing the impending impact of an asteroid. Though I imagine it's probably a little tough for the average person to tell more reputable sites apart from the trash. And guess what? That's exactly what we're talking about today. A website called tech.hindustantimes, whatever that means, is claiming that asteroid 2001 CB21 is going to, and I quote, pass too close to the Earth in March, unquote. But is this sensationalism? Yes, yes it is. And do their lofty claims of the asteroid's ability to blow us out of the Milky Way hold water? Spoiler, probably not. With that said, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. Yes, it is absolutely true to say that asteroid 2001 CB21 will be passing by the Earth on March 4th. But before we talk about the metric load of sensationalistic garbage in this article, let's talk some facts. Asteroid 2001 CB21 is considered to be a small Apollo-class asteroid, orbiting at a distance of 0.69 Nice. A U from the Earth. Its orbit takes around 384 days to complete, and sometimes it can get as far as 1.38 AU from the Sun, which means it has an eccentric orbit. Not a surprise for an asteroid like this. In terms of size, this thing is around half a kilometer to 1.2 kilometers in diameter. Keep in mind, that's just an estimate. That means that 2001 CB21 could be about as large as the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California. So nothing to sneeze at, but by far not the largest rock to ever hit our planet. Now in terms of speed, this sucker is traveling pretty fast. Asteroid 2001 CB21 clocks in at 12.017 kilometers a second this year. Which, while that is fast, it's not as fast as other hazardous asteroids like Bennu and Apophis, which clock in somewhere around 28 and 30 kilometers per second, respectively. As far as how close 2001 CB21 is going to be when it does pass us on March 4th, that's something we'll cover in the next section. Are you ready to rip this article a new one? Cause I am. The claims made by this article are idiotic, so prepare to lose some brain cells. Asteroid 2001 CB21 will indeed be passing us on March 4th, but at a distance of 4,911,102 kilometers, a far cry from passing quote-unquote too close to the Earth, or quote-unquote almost matching the Earth's orbit. 4 million kilometers from the Earth is farther out than where the Moon orbits us, which is 384,400 kilometers. That's a little more than 12 times Earth-Moon distance. 12 times. Not only that, but instead of giving us its speed in kilometers or miles per second, the article tells us that it's moving at a quote-unquote very fast pace of 43,236 kilometers per hour. Now, I don't know for sure, but if I were to guess, I'd say that they did this to make the asteroid seem more dangerous than it really is. And I don't even know what these numbers mean. What is 49,1128 kilometers or 48,15,555 kilometers? Did they mean 48,150,555 kilometers? Who knows? For context, the article is claiming that the asteroid will come this number close in 2043. On March 6th of 2043, the asteroid will pass at a distance of 4,815,369 kilometers. So it looks like they missed a decimal place. Twice. Would that be a comma place? But that's not all, because asteroid 2001 CB21 is just going to keep passing us at greater and greater distances. On October 6th of 2068, it will pass us at a great distance of 21,111,977 kilometers. So yeah, there's no chance this thing is going to hit us and I'd wager to guess that it will probably never hit us. Reporting like this is not only stupid, but it's irresponsible. The asshat who wrote this article clearly didn't double check their information, and from the looks of it, probably didn't want to, judging from the litany of spelling errors and comma errors. To make matters worse, when I was searching for Science News Thursday's content, this thing was at the top of Google's search results. Why? Now, I know what some commenters are going to say. You got so-and-so wrong in X video. Doesn't that make you, like, just as bad? I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm just one man writing, producing, and editing videos on the internet. And I do make mistakes from time to time, but I own them. Speaking of 
owning. Just recently, a total moron came to the channel accusing me of lying about the Tonga tsunami. You know, that update I did on the situation. They claimed that the waves that hit Tonga could not have been 49 to 50 feet high, because the whole island would be dead. I'm paraphrasing, but they did say something like that. They also went on to insult me using the fact that I write fiction to prove their illustrious point. So I guess screw me for being creative, right? At the Tonga Island capital's lowest point, it meets sea level. However, at the highest point, the island reaches 1,033 meters, 3,389 feet. Over 10 sources listed the tsunami waves as reaching up to either 49 feet or 50 feet high, or 14.9 to 15.24 meters high. These numbers are taken from first responders on the ground and local agencies and people who witnessed the event on the ground, first hand. They are not coming from thin air. I mean, the New York Times reported the same damn thing. And yes, I am fully aware that sometimes websites and journalists like to pump up scientific claims to ridiculous proportions. But until definitive numbers come out, human perception is after all flawed, I'm going to trust those sources. However, back to the subject at hand, the people at this tabloid website took real numbers and deliberately obfuscated them to make the asteroid seem more threatening. You want to complain about clickbait titles? How about clickbait articles? Listen people, I don't know if you know this, but the YouTube algorithm basically works off of clickbait. It was born in it, molded by it. Rant over, for now. But enough about this stupid website, let's say we go ahead and have some fun. What would happen if this asteroid actually did hit us? What would the consequences be? Also, why are we so obsessed with our own doom? That's right. Let's go ahead and play with Universe Sandbox and find out. As I mentioned earlier, asteroid CB21 is around 0.5 to 1 kilometer in diameter and is moving at 12 kilometers per second. Let's see what happens when we smash it into the Earth at an estimated size of 0.5 kilometers. I'm not quite sure if I'm right about this, but it looks to me like it exploded in the atmosphere like a bolide, causing other smaller meteor fragments to hit the Earth's surface. Asteroid impacts vary wildly depending on size, angle of impact, and speed, but if Universe Sandbox is right in this instance, then an impact from this object if it is 0.5 kilometers in diameter, while destructive, would not be a world-ending event. Earth seems to just shrug it off like it was nothing, and the average global temperature doesn't even go up after the impact. I didn't wait around to see if this impact would cause temperatures to fall, so it's possible that there would be far-reaching consequences from the impact years in the future. Take that with a grain of salt, though, because Universe Sandbox is not always 100% accurate. It is a game, after all. Next, I decided to increase the size of the asteroid to one kilometer in diameter, but kept the speed the same. The first test I tried, using a modified version of Universe Sandbox's interpretation of Apophis, for some reason the asteroid started traveling in the opposite direction, despite me clearly choosing to launch it at the Earth. The second attempt was much better, though the frame rate did start stuttering for some reason. Probably because I'm slowly killing my computer with all this video editing. This one appeared to hit the ocean, but there was an initial explosion, so it's possible that it either exploded over the ocean or in the atmosphere. Or, since it hit close to Antarctica, it could have also hit in shallow ocean waters. Regardless, this one caused the Earth's temperature to increase by 1 degree Celsius. That's not good, but more on that in the next section. For the third simulation, I launched the asteroid at Canada. Sorry, Canada. We're so, so sorry, Canada. And it generated a huge explosion. While the explosion does look spectacular, I do not think this would lead to an extinction-level event, though the average global temperature increased by about 1 degree Celsius again. Such an increase would be dramatic, and would definitely be a bad thing for us long term. But how drastic of an impact would a collision like this have on Earth's climate? Let's find out. <music> 
Back in 2016, Space.com ran an article detailing research by Charles Bardeen, who at the time worked at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, located in Boulder, Colorado. He and his team determined that if an asteroid one kilometer in size were ever to impact on land, then we'd be in for a crappy couple of years. If only he could have predicted the last few years, right? Such an impact could generate a crater at least 15 kilometers, 9.32 miles wide, and ignite surrounding forests. It would also toss a ton of debris into the Earth's atmosphere. This is, of course, assuming that the impact doesn't happen in a desert. The research done by Bardeen and company suggests that all of that debris would take 6 to 10 years to settle. This is, of course, worst case scenario. Remember that if the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs had impacted at a straight angle rather than a shallow one, it's possible that it wouldn't have triggered an extinction event. During this period of time, the stratosphere would warm considerably, which would end up speeding up chemical reactions that could destroy part of the Earth's ozone layer, albeit temporarily. So, no es bueno. The ozone layer protects us from all those harmful UV rays that your doctor is always telling you about. After the initial impact effects, the amount of sunlight reaching us on Earth would reduce drastically, potentially enough to start a mini ice age. This loss of sunlight would also cause plants to stop producing things we need. It turns out, plants don't like cold temperatures and need sunlight. Who knew, right? This would lead to food and crop shortages all over the world, which means a degree of famine. The bottom line is a lot of people would die. But as bad as all of this would be, this would still not cause a mass extinction. Humans overall are very resilient. I said we were resilient. I didn't say we weren't stupid. Our ancestors have survived at least two ice ages, and six to ten years is a drop in the bucket on the cosmic scale. Within one human lifetime, it's possible that things would return to normal, give or take. In order to cause a mass extinction, an asteroid would have to be much larger, at least ten times as large in fact, or moving at the speed of light, which is impossible. So yeah, even if asteroid CB21 were on a direct collision course with the Earth, humanity would more than likely endure, unless it's carrying a color out of space. That's all I've got for you this week. If you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and share this with someone who loves space, sarcasm, science, and doom. And hey, if you dig asteroid videos, check out this video on the asteroid that shaped the American East Coast. Wow, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Junkie.